NVIDIA is about to present over 20 AI-focused research papers at a conference, and some of the results are absolutely mind-blowing. They're speeding up different areas of gaming, animation, and computation by anywhere from 10 to over 100x. NVIDIA actually released these papers back in May, and the reason I'm just making this video now is because it took me this long to get through them all. That's right, I read all 20 papers so you don't have to. But instead of going through each of these papers one by one, what I'll do is put them into a few related groups and walk you through each group at a high level. And if you stick around until the end, I'll show you exactly how all of these papers fit together. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. The first group of papers is about using AI to make graphics better or cost fewer resources to render. Here's the big idea. Complex scenes usually need to be rendered offline over long periods of time. For example, a single frame of a Marvel movie takes an average of 7 hours to render. Assuming the movie runs at 24 frames per second, every second of a Marvel movie takes an entire week to render. That's roughly 7,200 weeks to render a 2-hour movie, or a little over 138 years of total rendering time. And it takes closer to 400 years to render a Pixar movie, since their movies are entirely CGI. That's the kind of problem these NVIDIA papers are focused on solving. Up first is this paper on real-time neural appearance models, which aims to render film quality materials in real time. At a high level, NVIDIA researchers trained a neural network to understand how different textures, materials, and geometries interact with light. That information gets passed to the system ahead of time instead of having to calculate it for every pixel during the rendering step. The second piece of information that they pass the rendering system is which pixels are important to calculate in the first place and which ones can simply be predicted. For example, flat surfaces don't need as many calculations as surfaces with lots of features. And simple materials like plastic don't need as many calculations as something like a precious gemstone or water surfaces with lots of wave action. The third trick is to break complex materials into different layers, do these calculations on each layer separately, and then recombine the layers after the fact. Doing that lets separate GPUs work on each layer of a material in parallel. And it turns out that by combining these three steps, you can render complex materials up to 10 times faster than traditional methods. But that's just the start. NVIDIA submitted another paper to this conference on neural compression of material textures. Compression is kind of like how when you zip up files to make them smaller, and then you can unzip or uncompress them without losing any of that data. Well, NVIDIA's neural image compression technique is designed specifically for image files, like skins and textures for video games, architectural renderings, product designs, and so on. But instead of trying to limit how much overall data is lost, like normal compression methods, NVIDIA's focuses on limiting the amount of visual artifacts found in the image after decompression. As a result, this method uses about 30% less memory than current state-of-the-art compression methods, and it can work on images at four times higher resolutions. Said another way, this compression method is about 13 times faster than the state-of-the-art for same-sized images. And we're still just getting started. Anybody who thinks that NVIDIA makes nothing but GPUs for gaming and data centers really isn't paying attention. One of the reasons that I invest in NVIDIA is because they innovate at every layer of AI, from the hardware all the way to industry-specific applications. And speaking of applications, Moomoo is a trading app designed to help advanced investors find great stocks at great prices. One of my favorite features is their institutional tracker. You can see which industries institutions are investing in, which stocks they hold the most overall, and which stocks they've been buying and selling most recently. You can even dive into specific institutions like Berkshire Hathaway or ARK Invest. Oh yeah, and there are no commissions, no account minimums, and no hidden fees. No wonder they have almost 20 million advanced investors on their platform. And right now, they're giving away up to 15 free stocks, each valued at up to $2,000, plus an extra $100 cash bonus and a free share of C3 AI when you use my link to sign up, and a bonus share of Tesla or Google when you deposit at least $5,000. So if you're trying to invest in AI, all these free stocks are an absolute no-brainer. All you need to do is download the app using my link, keep your funds at that level for at least 60 days, and enjoy up to 17 free stocks. But this offer ends soon, so make sure to get started today. All right. So far, we've talked about roughly 10x improvements for rendering different kinds of materials. Let's raise the stakes. This next NVIDIA paper focuses on hair simulation. Since I'm clearly an expert on all things hair, let me explain why this paper is so important. For one thing, it's not just about hair. 
This paper focuses on leveraging GPUs to realistically simulate the movements and interactions between more than 100,000 strands of hair. Objects like hair and fur and grass are usually created using geometric shapes. While they can look great in still images, the immersion gets ruined as soon as you add in motion. On top of that, they usually take a lot of resources to render and display simply because there's often a ton of it in any given scene. So if Nvidia can make hair and fur and grass take fewer resources to render, they can directly raise the bar on how immersive video games and CGI movies can be. That's a big deal. And here's how they did it. Instead of using geometry, this Nvidia project simulates each individual hair physically. At a high level, the idea is to model each strand of hair as a thin elastic rod with some amount of surface friction. That allows each strand to independently bend, twist, stick, and slip based on what's going on around it. And this technique gets a massive speed up from running on GPUs, since each natural chunk of hair can be calculated separately in parallel. And as a result, this technique is about 126 times faster than previous methods. This is a huge step up in making our favorite games, movies, and other media way more immersive in the near future. Another thing that often breaks our immersion is faces. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything. So NVIDIA is presenting a paper at this conference called Live 3D Portraits, Real-Time Radiance Fields for Single Image Portrait View Analysis. <laughs> That's a real mouthful, so let me break it down for you. I think this is one of the most important papers that they're presenting. The thing that makes this technique so special is that it's a real-time method to calculate and render faces from a single unposed image. Think about that. You don't need to use a special background, you don't need to do a special pose, or even have the picture of your face be straight on. That means this technique is easy to use in a wide variety of ways, like enhancing facial recognition for your mobile devices, optimizing filters for social media, 3D modeling for video games and movies, the list goes on and on because it's so easy to add an input to this technique. This technique also runs in real time, which means it's a good candidate for adapting to other solutions, not just human faces, but animal faces and other kinds of objects altogether. Being able to quickly calculate 3D structures from 2D pictures has massive implications for augmented and virtual reality as well, since everyone could help populate virtual worlds just by taking pictures they already take anyway. I'll touch more on that in a little bit. The other part of this technique that I really want to highlight is that it was trained using only synthetic data. That means they didn't train this algorithm on pictures of real people, but on AI-generated faces. On top of that, one of the biggest contributions of this paper is a set of functions and a strategy to train future tools like these using only synthetic data. Think about all the copyright issues around AI that have been making headlines lately, like companies training neural networks using copyrighted images, or training large language models using data from Reddit without paying for it. NVIDIA being able to train an AI model on made-up data and still having the inference work on real data is a big step forward for these legal and regulatory challenges for all kinds of artificial intelligence applications. Oh yeah, and this technique is 1500 times faster at encoding images and over two times faster at rendering the final output. I think this paper really shows that AI can improve something that every single person would use, from unlocking your phone with your face to filters for social media all without invading anybody's privacy or breaking any copyright laws. Look, I'm not saying that all advancements in AI are always a good thing, but I really hope that this paper shows you that not all innovations in AI are scary or bad either. That's something I'm really passionate about getting across. And NVIDIA is submitting another paper that builds on top of this one by making those faces morphable. At first, I just wanted to include this paper because this 2D skin makes me laugh, but it's actually solving a new and interesting problem. See, single view facial reconstructions, like the ones from the previous paper, don't do a good job capturing how those faces would change under motion. So this paper proposes a new way to model faces geometrically, to allow for easy editing, for example, changing the face's expression or editing the skins and textures on top of it. This paper isn't really about speeding anything up, so much as it's about improving the model structure in ways that make the outputs more usable in more industry applications, like animation and design. And speaking of structure, NVIDIA has been working on pulling 3D structures from 2D images for a while now. But the big challenge here is in recovering the finer details of real-world scenes from just a few images. 
Well, this next paper is called Neural Angelo, High Fidelity Neural Surface Reconstruction, and it addresses these issues by passing video data through a few very clever filters that are enabled by neural networks. These AI filters do things like find the right level of smoothness for a given surface based on its structure and reduce the polygon count of smoother surfaces to save on space and computation. As a result, this technique can calculate 3D structures of basically any scene captured in a video from complex objects and geometries, to building interiors and exteriors, and even entire land and cityscapes. I actually worked on applying a much simpler version of some of these techniques when I was in grad school. The basic idea I was working on was flying a drone with a camera around a disaster zone, capturing as much footage as I could, calculating the 3D structure in that footage, and then labeling points of interest like entrances, exits, and hazards that I could pass along with the 3D map to emergency services since they can't easily get that information on the ground. NVIDIA's paper is like that, but on steroids, and I think this will be another one of those techniques that will be adopted much more broadly. All right, at the beginning of this video, I said I'd show you how I see all this research fitting together. I think it's pretty obvious that these massive improvements in rendering complex materials and geometries, as well as hair, fur, and faces, are going to make games, movies, and design projects more immersive and less expensive. I also think that being able to calculate 3D structures of people, objects of basically any size, and even whole environments will make it much easier to create large-scale digital twins and do useful things with them, like run tests and simulations in NVIDIA's Omniverse. For example, we saw them cover huge use cases like optimizing the layouts of digital car factories before building the factory for real. So these techniques could help digitize objects involved in that kind of modeling and simulation. And as a result, ecosystems like NVIDIA's Omniverse and Unity Software could be huge beneficiaries of this kind of research. But I think the biggest application that nobody is really thinking about is augmented and virtual reality. Now that Apple is in the game with their Vision Pro headset, we're going to see a lot more apps that do things with 3D spaces instead of 2D screens. And we already know that the Vision Pro can take pictures and record videos. So all of this research on extracting structures from images and videos, as well as it making it cost way less to render them, means that we could see a huge increase in the production of 3D content, augmented reality tools, and virtual reality applications. Look, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the metaverse is right around the corner, but these are the exact kinds of fundamental building blocks that will lay the groundwork for it over time. And to me, that's a future worth investing in. But there's one more massive AI breakthrough that you need to know about. So make sure to check out this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.